Hello, this is the Summary TV. Let's see why the world almost faced the Third World War in 1962. In 1959, Fidel Castro seized the power in Cuba, and the U.S. was shocked. Because Cuba was just 90 miles away from Florida, the Soviet Union wanted to protect its communism ally from the U.S. He kept thinking, and one day on May 1962, he got an idea during his vacation in Bulgaria. The Soviet Union and Cuba agreed to launch missile facilities in Cuba. Even if the U.S. recognizes the missile launch sites, it would be after the construction is completed. Even if United States sends troops and destroys the missile facilities, there would be at least one nuclear missile left in Cuba. And that's enough to attack New York. In summer of 1962, Cuba and Soviet Union started building missile facilities. For over five months, they used more than 60 vessels to deliver materials to Cuba. 42 middle-range missiles, 42 long-range bombers, and 162 warheads were moved to the missile facilities. The sites were almost completed, but on October 14, U-2 spy plane got photo evidence of the facilities. Two days later, right after President Kennedy finished his breakfast, he was urgently reported. He immediately summoned Axcom. The purpose of the team was to deal with grave crisis. The clock was ticking, and three options were on the table. Air strike, land invasion, and sea blockade. How about initiate air strike and then invade on land to collapse Castro regime? But only 60% to 90% of missiles in Cuba could be eliminated, so it was risky and the U.S. didn't have enough time. Also, that option could worsen the situation, so President Kennedy decided to use naval force and make the Soviet Union give up the missiles. Meanwhile, the U.S. started preparing for the worst case. 300 ships were dispatched in the Caribbean Sea to block the region, and 180,000 of the troops were ready to attack Cuba. President Kennedy ordered nuclear shelters to store emergency food supplies and drinking water. On October 22, Monday evening, President Kennedy announced on television and radio. He explained to the U.S. people that nuclear missile launch facilities are under construction in Cuba. Also, he empathized that the government will try to alleviate tension and take a firm stance against threats. Launching facilities in Cuba is a threat to the U.S. If Soviet Union attacks America, there could be an all-out war. For peace talks, we welcome you anytime, anywhere. The Soviet Union immediately responded. Missile units were at emergency standby. All vessels which were on their way to Cuba were ordered to keep sailing to the destination. In its internal meeting, Soviet thought this could be another world war. Khrushchev sent a message to Kennedy. The U.S. cannot tell us what to do. Later, the Soviet leader said, I didn't even change my clothes when sleeping during the crisis. I was completely ready to fight if any emergency occurs. Kennedy sent a letter to Khrushchev. The U.S. is concerned about your secret missile facilities construction in Cuba. The U.S. Navy will stop your vessels carrying construction materials. United States and its allies were worried. Can we see the sunrise tomorrow? Next day, 
Kennedy orders, keep operating spy planes to observe what's happening in Cuba, initiate naval blockade. Meanwhile, the U.S. didn't want the Third World War, but the two giants had no informal communication channel to alleviate tensions. Both the two countries thought, we need easy and quick informal communication to prevent war. Let me do something. He contacted Charles Dollett, a renowned journalist who helped President Kennedy meet the First Lady, Jacqueline. Robert Kennedy asked Charles Bartlett to meet George Borishakov. Ostensibly, he was a Soviet journalist, but actually he was a chief officer of Soviet spy institution's Washington office. So, Bollett met Borishakov. President Kennedy is concerned there could be another attack on Pearl Harbor. The U.S. doesn't want to invade Cuba, but missiles should be eliminated. How about we deal with this issue in UN? For peaceful talks, the Soviet vessels must stop selling to Cuba. Borshakov listened carefully but said no word. So, Robert Kennedy asked Bollett to meet him again with clear photo evidence of missile facilities. The White House ordered the U.S. nuclear army to initiate DEFCON 2. It was an action to get prepared for all-out war. The Kremlin responded immediately. New York could be erased on the map tomorrow by the nuclear attack of the Soviet Union. Robert Kennedy visited Anatoly Dovrinin, the Soviet ambassador to the U.S. He knew the ambassador had direct communication channel with Khrushchev. Previously, you promised not to build missile facilities in Cuba. You lied. He tried to stand out of the room and asked even without turning his face. The U.S. president decided to stop your vessels. What would your country do? Our ships can sail anywhere we want on open seas. Your country is violating the international law. Don't tell us to stop sailing. Keep in mind that the U.S. will surely store your ship's voyage to Cuba. The situation was getting worse. Khrushchev sent a message to Kennedy. Mr. President, do not blame Soviet Union. Calm down and think about the situation. What if a country demands U.S. ships to stop sailing on open sea? You may reject it. That's why I also say no. Bothering the international right to sail on open seas could trigger a nuclear war. If the United States stops our vessels, we will do whatever we can do. 25 vessels were moving and almost about to enter the naval blockade area. We were just close to a war with the U.S. Want it or not, one shot could trigger a tragedy. When the Soviet ships were approaching to the naval blockade line, President Kennedy was at the White House with advisors. Nervous atmosphere was pressuring the whole people in the White House. At the moment, a secret message was reported from Navy. In the next video, we'll see what happened. If you know how the crisis ended, please leave comments below.